Thank you very much. First, I would like to take the opportunity to thank uh, Dr. Leung and also the organizing committee again for giving me this chance to, uh, to present um, <coughs> our work in single cell genome sequencing as well as uh, we put this um, technical work into clinical applications as in uh, pre-implantation genetic diagnosis as well as uh, non-invasive chromosome screening using cultural medium for uh, single, uh, single blastosis uh, transfer. So um, actually, I was given the topic of talking mainly about the results and the clinical data of uh, PGD and, and Nix, but I would like to uh, also take the opportunity to first introduce the technology, and then we we'll move on to more data uh, on, on the clinical data on the, on the, on the uh, PGD as well as Nix. Because I was trained as a physicist, so um, that's why I, I love to talk more about the technology first. Uh, I'd like to uh, do my disclosure. I'm the co-founder, board member, shareholder, and CEO of Econ Genomics, and we provide clinical service um, mainly in the field of reproductive genetics um, in mainland China. So, based, uh, so whole genome sequencing uh, has been a very, um, very important technology in the past uh, 10 years. Uh, basically, genome um, defines biological function and disease. So in order to study uh, the biological function and disease, uh, genome sequencing provides a very important tool for us to understand um, the basic units of life. And single cell genome sequencing is actually providing uh, a very detailed understanding of the, homo uh, of the heterogeneity within a biological system. So there are uh, areas when single cell studies are very important. Um, there are several scenarios. Uh, if the cells are very unique, for example, the germline cells and T cells, and each cell is very different from each other, and uh, it's, it's also important if the genome changes with time, for example, in cancer. And it's important um, when um, the, 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 um, the tissue is highly uh, heterogeneous and um, also it's mosaic. And it's important in clinical diagnostics, um, ex especially, especially when sample amount is very limited. For example, in, um, in PGD, where we can only get uh, one or several cells, and um, also in circular tumor cells, where only one or few cells can be obtained from the, from the, from the uh, blood sample from the patient. So in order for single cell studies to be uh, able to, uh, you know, uh, perform, um, a very important step is the whole genome amplification. Because normally, um, whatever uh, platform that we are using, for example, next generation sequencing or microarray or qPCR, we need a certain amount of starting amount of the materials. So basically, it comes down to the question of how you can bring up a picogram level of uh, DNA to a microgram level of DNA uh, by whole genome amplification. And the amplification efficiency and accuracy basically defines how well the test can be performed, um, no matter what test you are performing. So there are several ways of doing this uh, whole genome amplification. Um, and the easiest way is um, it's, it's suggested uh, almost uh, 30 years ago uh, 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 by PCR. So PCR-based methods, basically, it includes um, we try to basically fragmentize, fragmentize the, the whole genome, and then we add this adapter on two ends of the whole genome, and then we do an amplification. But PCR methods is often have uh, this amplification bias and low genome coverage. So normally, it's, it's a good method for analyzing uh, chromosome level of uh, you know, uh, genome. However, if you come down into uh, you know, single gene diseases, it's difficult to be analyzed by PCR methods. And there's this very important um, technology called multiple displacement amplification, um, who um, uh, actually was, um, the, the, the method was developed uh, um, in, the, in, the, in the new, uh, in the around uh, 2000, year 2000. So this technology basically uses this very highly displaced um, enzyme called 529, uh, and it generates multiple displacement 
uh, amplification on a long uh, uh, genome DNA. So these amplification methods have improved genome coverage. It, it normally, it can cover more than 90% of the genome, and it has improved allele dropout rate. So basically, allele dropout rate means that if you um, amplify the, the, the single cell, you want the two alleles from the mother and from the mother wants to be, from the father, wants to be equally represented. However, there are circumstances where um, one of the alleles is dropped uh, during the amplification process. So this allele dropout rate uh, is also very important in analyzing a, a certain uh, 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 amplification methods. Uh, but however, this method is often um, still um, hampered by this amplification bias. So if we want to analyze very small amounts of material such as, um, um, you know, the, the DNA is released into culture medium, then uh, it's often uh, generates amplification bias that the counting is no longer accurate. So, um, so that's why starting from 20, around 2010, um, uh, Professor Sunny She and, and, and us, uh, we're, uh, we work at, at Harvard, and we uh, develop a new method called multiple annealing and looping-based amplification cycles. Basically, this method, Melbach, um, basically it combines the, the two basic concepts of PCR and MDA. And, and this um, guarantee you both have a high genome coverage, low allele dropout rates, and also low amplification bias. So we have been using these methods in uh, a couple of uh, you know, uh, basic research, as well as after you know, 2012 when um, me and Professor Xi decided that we want to come back to China, establish this, um, um, this uh, PGD and PGS platform. We use this technology uh, to do the validation on, on, the, on the platforms, and we provide a clinical service based on this uh, mobile technology. So let me introduce several, uh, um, several uh, researches that we have done using the, uh, the single cell whole genome and uh, sequencing technology. Uh, so um, this, is, this was uh, one of the earliest the research that we basically, we sequence um, 93 single sperms one by one of a single individual. So from each sperm, we were able to map out the SNPs that are associated with this sperm. And then if we um, basically combine all the SNPs that we map out and then we map, it, map this into the whole genome of the, of the, of the human, and then we will be able to reconstruct um, the recombination map of, um, of this single um, uh, human being. So this is also the first genetic uh, recombination map um, from using you know, single sperm cells to do that work. And this work was in collaboration um, with, with uh, Dr. Chiao Jie's lab uh, and, 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 and uh, Dr. Fu Chou Tang's lab at Peking University. So not only sperm, um, we do single oocytes, and um, we were able to basically also map out a um, you know single oocyte genome, and and together with a recombination from that single oocyte from a uh, from from a human being. Um, so not only uh, the genome side, um, this single cell um, uh, genome sequence, uh, uh, single cell analysis also can be applied in transcriptome analysis. Uh, basically. Um, um, single cells um, can be can be analyzed um, uh, with their gene expressions, and and this uh, will also I, 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 um, will also provide important information um, for us to study a, a heterogeneous expression system um, in, uh, in in mouse embryo as well as human embryo. So, <coughs> sorry. So I would like to spend more time on. Um, you know, basically, we, we now establish the technology, but how this technology can, can be transferred into really uh, clinical applications. Uh, so um, uh, any clinical application, because it will be used in real human being, it needs to be validated. So after, uh, you know, we establish the mobile back technology, the first step we do is that we, uh, we validate this technology in PGT, in, in pre-implantation genetic uh, screening, of using uh, uh, to, to do aneuploidy screening. So basically, this technology was uh, validated uh, against the uh, SNP array as well as array CGH. 
Um, so we uh, do a, basically we collect uh, the same embryo and then we separate embryo into pieces and then, um, and, and they were, and they were sequenced, um, you know, they were analyzed using different platforms. So we can see the concordance is uh, very high between these three technologies. So after that, um, because the, the any, actually any WGA technology, it was, because it was not designed to, to be uh, used in, uh, in, in PGD and PGS context, it was not optimized. So after, after we have this mailbag technology, we also fully, uh, fully uh, actually further improves the, the, uh, the throughput as well as the, the runtime of the, of the technology. So, um, so now the whole genome and amplification and NGS library preparation can be prepared in about 2.5 hours. And then, um, uh, and then we put this on the machine for sequencing, it takes about five hours. And we have an, an analytical platform that uh, basically allows the, the whole system to be analyzed in 0.5 hours automatically. So altogether, um, um, we can finish a, uh, basically a single cell uh, genome analysis in nine hours uh, with about 1.5 hours hands-on time. So this technology now has been used um, to analyze basically uh, fresh transfer embryos. So if people want to uh, biopsy on day three and then they will be able to um, you know, perform fresh, uh, fre fresh uh, blastocyst uh, embryo transfer uh, on day five um, um, using this fast uh, platform. So this is the software that basically enables us to do this uh, fast analysis that basically we, uh, uh, we upload the data onto the, onto the server and then it automatically generates this, uh, uh, this report, uh, whether it passes QC, um, um, the gender can be selected or, or blocked. Uh, it, uh, it, it tells you whether the conclusion, general conclusion of the, of the embryo is normal or abnormal, and then it provides you the detailed karyotypes. So if you zoom in into uh, each data, and then we will be able to see um, the detailed karyotype of the, of the, of the chromosomes, um, as well as um, if you zoom further in into each chromosome, then we'll be able to um, see even within the chromosome what's the distribution of the reads and uh, whether we'll be able to see uh, segmental um, you know, abnormalities within this chromosome. So this is for chromosome analysis uh, using whole genome uh, sequencing. Uh, but for about, how about single gene PGD? Because um, we work mainly in China, and uh, we have a huge population base in China. And then we each year uh, also we are facing about a five percent uh, genetic defect rate of uh, of birth. So um, it's very important for us to establish a uh, a single gene PGD pipeline that is efficient and cost effective in order for um, the patients to the second, basically the family, if they want to have the second baby, they can use uh, PGD, single gene PGD, to prevent uh, genetic disease from passing down to the next generation. So that's why we have uh, designed this uh, pipeline for single, G, uh, single gene PGD. Basically after amplification, after doing the biopsy, uh, we have this uh, WGA products with um, uh, WGA products. And then this single WGA products uh, will be analyzed for both copy number variation as well as the, uh, the SMPs, the single nucleotide polymorphisms uh, that are associated uh, with the monogenic uh, uh, diseases or in a single procedure. So, um, so for each embryo, basically, we will get um, the mutation uh, load of that particular uh, uh, monogenic disease, and we also get the chromosomal analysis of each embryo, as well as the uh, the, the single nucleotide polymorphism markers that are associated with this particular uh, disease. And so, um, this was the paper that we published after our first live birth using this technology back in 2015, I guess. Yeah. And it was in collaboration with uh, Professor Chao Jie's group from um, uh, Peking University Third Hospital. So this is a heretical multiple exotosis case uh, where it's a uh, it's a, uh, a uh, it's a dominant uh, uh, um, um, dominant disease, 
and the family basically has about 50% of the uh, of the family members are affected by this um, disease. So um, to yeah, so to to provide this um, uh, genetic diagnosis, we uh, we we obtain the embryos and then we 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 perform both the chromosome analysis as well as the uh, as well as the uh, the point mutation analysis and the uh, single nucleotide polymorphism analysis on the same embryo, and we were able to confirm um, the the um, basically uh, we were able to confirm confirm this result by. Uh, Aminosynthesis, and um, the first baby was born in 2014 in uh, uh, Professor Zhao Jie's group uh, in Peking University Third Hospital. So after that, basically, we use the technology and we uh, provide uh, this uh, genetic testing uh, for a wide range of um, genetic diseases, including uh, heretical deafness, um, uh, PKD, uh, polycystic uh, kidney disease. As well as um, so, so those are basically um, you know single point mutations. But we will be we we are also able to provide this single gene diseases based on uh, uh, on on for example in this case CMT1A gene is a 1.4 copy number gain. So it's a small, very small copy number gain, and um, and, and because of the amplification, it's even we'll be able to identify this uh, gain uh, with, uh, with the amplification products. So these are the lists that we currently uh, we have provided, um, um, uh, PGD cases in China. It, we have about uh, more than, um, we have done more than 400 different kind of disease, diseases um, with thousands of cases of uh, single gene PGD. And so um, single gene PGD uh, actually it's only a, uh, a very small portion of PGD that we're providing. And so um, lots of the uh, actually recurrency pregnancy loss patients, uh, if you look at the karyotypes, they are, um, they, are, they are basically carriers of chromosomal abnormalities, such as balance translocation, Robertsonian translocation, duplication, deletions, inversion, insertions. So normally, uh, if we only look at, uh, basically, if we look at the ploidy of the all 24 chromosomes, this is what we get. So you have uh, chromosome number 1 to 22, and then um, you, basically there is no way you can uh, tell the difference of a truly normal embryo uh, versus a, uh, a carrier of the balanced translocation. Because it's balanced, so um, the, just for counting, uh, just for the perspective of counting the chromosomes, they are with uh, balanced uh, copy numbers. So, um, so, uh, but if we are not able to distinguish that, then the same, same situation, the same uh, basically phenotype, uh, genotype will be, uh, will be passed to the next generation. So it will be, it will be beneficial for us to be able to distinguish this in, uh, in, uh, in, 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 in the embryos. So we collaborated with uh, uh, Professor Sun Yingpu's team at uh, Zhengzhou University First Affiliated Hospital, and we, uh, we, and we designed this MAREX. So MAREX is a mapping allele with resolved carrier states of Repsonian and, and reciprocal translocation. So basically, by using the, um, after doing this copy number variation analysis, um, by by just sequence the uh, basically the the SNPs that are uh, associated with this breakpoint. So basically, we treat the breakpoints as a single gene disease, and then use the SNPs um, to 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 select out that breakpoint, and then do the haplotype analysis using the SNPs, uh, and then um, uh, and then we map that back to the to the normal chromosomes that we detected. Then we will be able to select out the truly normal, um, basically embryos without carrying. Um, this uh, balance translocation. So this is the first case that we've done. Uh, basically, it's a uh, balance translocation of chromosome number nine and number twenty-one, and we t we obtain uh, seven uh, blastocyst embryos for analysis. And there is one embryo that, that seemingly uh, it's uh, the em the the aneuploidy screening is normal. So we use this uh, technology on this um, single. Um, um, seemingly normal embryo, and then we were able to identify 
that it's uh, associated with the normal allele of the balanced translocation uh, patients. So um, by doing that, and then we were able to predict that um, the, the embryo is truly normal, and we also confirmed that by uh, amniocentesis results. Um, and so um, a healthy baby was born at, um, at Zhengzhou University uh, two years ago. So this is a pilot application of using the technology to truly you know, identify and, and select uh, the normal uh, uh, embryos uh, to transfer. So we have performed um, um, together with our collaborators in 24 IVF centers of uh, 90, 98 IVF cycles. So we obtained a total embryo of 60, 650 as of August the 2018. And um, so there are uh, 346 embryos that were able to enter into phase two. So phase two is what we define as we were able to try to, def to, to detect whether the embryo is a uh, carrier or not. So, um, and, and there are 87 embryos that basically uh, it's, it's ploidy normal. So out of this 87 ploidy normal embryos, we have 47 um, that is truly normal, that is not carrying a, a balanced translocation. So this rate is around half and half. That is uh, actually uh, within our prediction, our expectation. Okay, so those are with uh, pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. Um, uh, so now I want to move more into the uh, uh, of the screening part. So um, um, some of the actually uh, um, you know uh, pre PGS uh, so strictly defined PGS in in China is not very widely offered yet uh, because um, there are several issues. First is that uh, we are a little worried about the widely uh, use of PGS may may cause potential damage. And there are also long-term safety issues that, that may not be able to identify as for now. And it is also uh, pretty difficult to standardize the, uh, the, uh, the biopsy procedure. And because in China, we are, we are doing about um, almost a million IVF cycles per year. And, um, and I don't think we have that many well-trained uh, embryologists who is able to perform the um, the the uh, the biopsy procedure uh, in a very high standard that basically prevent uh, from any kind of damage. So um, so I think that's also one of the limitations that limits the use of PGS in China and also in some part of the world. So it would be very nice for us if uh, we can develop some technology that basically enables. Um, you know, non-invasive uh, chromosome screening using uh, culture medium that will be um, the, uh, to to remove the the need of uh, using uh, of of performing embryo biopsy. So that's why uh, we started this uh, project about three years ago, uh, and we do research on using um, the, um, the the genome sequencing technology that are introduced uh, to perform non-invasive chromosome screening. So we collected, um, actually there are different ways of collect this. So we collected uh, day three to day six, uh, day three to day five, or day five to day six culture medium. And then we uh, use this culture medium to perform DNA amplification and sequencing. So this is the first paper that we published uh, back in 2016. Uh, basically, we validate this technology uh, so we uh, use um, this ICSI, provide, uh, ICSI, ICSI created embryos, and um, those are donated embryos. So uh, we, uh, we collect the day three to day five culture medium, and then we compare that with the whole embryo. Uh, and we use the whole embryo as a gold standard to characterize of our culture medium results. So uh, after, provide, uh, after performing on 42 embryos, we were able to have a sensitivity of 88.2%, specificity of 84.0%, and positive predictive value of 78.9%, and a negative predictive value of 91.3% using this culture medium to predict uh, whether we have chromosomal abnormalities in the whole embryo. So because of the high negative predictive value, we think 
um, this technology is able to uh, basically apply clinically with uh, informed consent from the patients. So that's why we collected our first patients uh, with, uh, uh, with Wuxi Maternity Hospital, that basically the patient is with a, um, the, the male was with a balanced translocation of 14 and 15. So three embryos were obtained, and, and basically we collect the cultural medium of this three embryo uh, first. So this M1, M2, and M3 are the cultural medium we collected. So after performing the test, uh, we were able to get uh, the results on all of the three embryos, and two of the embryos are clearly uh, have this uh, chromosomal uh, problems with 14 and 15. So that's why those embryos are, were not selected for transfer, and the, uh, and the embryos were donated for research. So we sequenced the embryo, and then um, the, um, the, basically the embryo looks exactly like the, uh, the profile that we see in the culture medium. So that way, we also, also uh, validate in this clinical case um, that um, the cultural medium fully represents the embryo. And then the third embryo, basically, in the cultural medium, it's uh, completely normal in all 24 chromosomes. So this embryo was selected for transfer, and a baby was born um, um, using this transfer of this particular embryo back in 2016, two years ago. So those are the medias. and. It was that day in the in the in the basically in the in the subway that it's, the media is everywhere and, and showing that's the first baby born in Wuxi Maternity Hospital, and then so after that um, we uh, we performed a pilot clinical study in the, a single center pilot clinical study uh, using uh, non invasive co uh, chromosome screening versus uh, you know using morphology as a uh, as a screening. Uh, Basically, this is a retrospective. So we use uh, we we perform uh, the non-invasive chromosome screening on on the, on the patients, and we use the uh, uh, the the data from the centers uh, of that particular time to compare. So this is a single blaster transfer group, and this is the next group. We can see that the uh, HC, the, the clinical pregnancy rate is uh, is a, is about twelve percent improved uh, compared with the uh, morphology group. And uh, the early miscarriage rate it's, uh, is also significantly reduced from the from the from the um, early uh, from the single blast uh, sorry from the morphology group. And so since then, um, uh, as of January 2018, so we have not updated number yet. Uh, we have done 66 cycles and uh, 300 embryos uh, using this NIX from that single center, and we have uh, obtained 27 healthy live birth um, from that single center. And some of the, um, some of the uh, patients opt in uh, amniocentesis to confirm the, the, the transfer results, and it shows that actually um, those that, are, uh, that, 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 that perform this test all confirm our, 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 our data, our, our transfer data. And not only uh, we do that in one center, we also uh, evaluate this uh, in collaboration with uh, Catherine Rukowski's group of Harvard University Brigham Women Hospital. And those, uh, we have 50 cultural mediums in, in total, and we have an amplification success rate of 100%. And uh, if we compare that with the uh, traditional, uh, you know, TE biopsy, uh, based uh, a PGS and uh, using the whole embryo as a gold standard, we have actually seen no difference on accuracy between using non-invasive chromosome screening uh, versus the biopsy-based PGS. And this study is again another study that we collaborated with uh, five centers in China, in East China. So this is, uh, we include more cases, more, uh, you know, uh, uh, embryos. So in each group, um, we, uh, with PGS and NICS, we have uh, 246 uh, samples and 283 sam uh, 238 samples. And we have seen no significant difference in all of the KPIs that, um, for, for, this, uh, for this diagnostic uh, uh, methods. And this manuscript is being submitted. Um, currently, and there is another group um, who is actually uh, focused on uh, doing this test with balanced chromosomal arrangement patients, 
And um, if we focus on the two chromosomes that are involved in this balanced translocation, it actually, the, um, the, the, the false negative drops almost to zero, and the false positive is also dropped to zero, almost. So um, both cases, uh, we have um, you know, MPV and PPV of uh, more than 95% uh, for, this, for this test. And this manuscript is also in preparation uh, is co in collaboration with uh, uh, Shengjin Hospital uh, in China. And so those are validation studies. Uh, so besides that, we also designed two pilot uh, clinical studies. And one is, uh, uh, both of them are ongoing. So the data that I showed, basically, they don't add up because we're still following the patients along the way. Um, and one study is a non-inferiority study of using NICS versus PGS. So one group we use NICS to treat the patient and the other we use PGS. And in, in, in both cases we included 60, 60 patients. And um, so, so far we have not seen any difference, um, any significant difference of the, of, the, of the clinical pregnancy as well as the miscarriage rate um, you know, within these two groups. And there is another study that we are currently doing, a pilot study, it's also ongoing, it's a superiority pilot study that we use NICS versus morphology to, um, to, to assess and, and to select the embryo for transfer. And in, one, uh, and in, in both arms, we included almost 40 patients. And, and in these um, two groups, we have already seen basically a quite significant difference in the miscarriage part. So in the NICS, if we selected the embryo before uh, it was transferred, we have not seen any miscarriage so far. But in the control group by morphology, we have already seen four miscarriages. Um, of course, the number is still small, uh, but we are still following um, these patients and see um, and, and to obtain this uh, significant, significant difference between um, you know, a clinical pregnancy rate as well as the, this miscarriage rate. So uh, as of August the 2018, uh, we have shown promise uh, in using the non-invasive chromosome screening to improve clinical pregnancy rate and miscarriage rate uh, versus the morphology group. Um, so I'm sorry I'm run a little bit over time, but it's very important that I do this acknowledgement. It, nothing will, of this will happen without, um, if I, without being in Professor Sunny Shi's group at Harvard University. It's a great group. Uh, we work together day and night to develop new technologies. Um, this is Professor Sunny Shi, a um, very happy guy. And, and nothing of this would happen uh, without doing, you know, without a very close collaboration uh, with our collaborators, such as Professor Chiao Jie, um, who helped us to validate this technology very early uh, in, in, our, in our study, who helps us to validate both the chromosomal analysis as well as uh, the, the, the single gene uh, diseases that we have together perform, you know, a lot of uh, tests for a lot of patients, and we, I'm really grateful for, for her group to, uh, for her and for her group to, to in, uh, for this close collaboration to help these patients. And I'm grateful um, for, um, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, patient, uh, the patients and doctors that we co-develop the technology together. Um, and um, nothing of this cool technology will happen, will we'll, we'll really benefit the, the patients without our close collaboration with all these collaborators. So thank you very much. Thank you.